it's uncomfortable. Um, it can hurt your ribs if you do it incorrectly. It can hurt you even if you do do it correctly. Um, your breathing isn't the same. So if that's not your gag, your bag, don't do it. It doesn't make you any less of a drag king if you don't want to bind your chest. Um, there are even times where, like if I'm wearing something a little bit more baggy, I'll go out on stage in a sports bra. I'm not very large chested as it is. Um, uh, I, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to let you guys know, I'm like rocking a large B, small C. So I don't uh, have as much... I feel like I definitely like I feel myself more when I bind and I definitely definitely feel myself more when I tape I don't know what it is about taping but that is my favorite even though it takes a while and it's not always um, kind to your skin first thing I'm going to talk about today is binders um, actually before I even get to buy out uh, what I have going on in my tum tum region back up a little bit so I've already gotten into a lot of my drag you see my face is done my eyelashes are done my lips are even on I don't even think I forgot anything on my face this time you guys what I know I didn't glue these down but I just didn't feel like it so I have a lot of extra um skin in this area and fat that you so I have to oh, tuck it all in so I'm gonna take you guys through what I do here I layer up I wear tights Yes, I'm a king. Yes, I wear tights. The reason I wear tights is because, whew, first of all, it gives you a little bit of that control top feeling. It moves out your legs. I, when I went from not wearing tights to wearing tights, I noticed it very clearly in my pictures. You couldn't see every ripple of cellulite. Um, and yeah, I just, I feel better. I feel more tight and compact. And um, yeah, it just makes me feel better. So after the pair of go, and I pull up this pair of Spanx. This is like regular shapewear. You see that you kind of see both um, layers of it. That's because I cut the waist off. The waist was a very, very thick elastic band. Um, and I don't really need any help making my waist thinner or kind of shape anyway. So I wanted this more for my gut and not really for my waist. So that's why we cut that off. Um, and then on top of that, I just put my regular old underwear and then I pack. He's shy. So yeah, put a little packer in there. If you don't have um, a packer, somebody really cool that might be doing a video right now actually handmade the one that is in my pants. And if you ask real nicely, I'll bet I'll make you one too. Um, but yeah, if you want something a little bit more realistic to pack with, Mr. Limpy on Amazon is perfect. If you're looking for something functional, you're going to be paying a lot more money if you're talking like a stand to uh, like a stand to pee or a pack plain pee or something like that. If you're looking for things that are more functional, you're going to start paying a lot more money. But I think Mr. Limpy on Amazon, I don't think it's more than $20 and um, I sell mine for less than $20. So yeah, so that's what I've got going on on my lower half. Let me preface all of this by saying, first of all, None of these brands are sponsoring me. I'm not telling you anything because anybody's paying me. These are just the things that I've used that have worked for me. Secondly, any kind of binding that you do is going to have some kind of risk to it. There is no way around that. You're going to risk some matter of doing smart and timing things out correctly, practicing safe techniques, you know, making sure you're not ripping your skin, making sure you're not keeping things on. Long. Um, so yeah, this is from GC2B. Highly, highly recommend their binders. Um, they are a little bit more expensive, but they are made by trans people for trans people. I try to make sure that when I am buying things like this, I buy from LGBTQ people as much as I can. And GC2B is an L and you get. You are going to want to make sure, I'm going to flip this guy inside out kind of so you can see. You're going to want to make sure that one side, I don't know if you can see the difference in material here. This side here has no stretch at all. Okay. This side here, give, that way you can breathe. The thing that we're worried about um, with tightness in binders is if you are up on stage, you're dancing around, even if you're just walking around in general life, and you, and you breathe out a lot, if that's too tight on you, 
you will not be able to take a deep breath back in. So you need to make sure that you have something that, again, gives you no give in the chest area, but does give give in the back. Also, when you're shopping for binders, I know that it's really tempting to want to go a size not flatness. What we're going for is, um, uh, it's called like a chest masculinization. Um, so when you're looking to buy one, like I said, make sure you buy the right size. Normally, it's your t-shirt size. If you, when in doubt though, just go to the measuring, go to the sizing chart, measure yourself because you want to make sure that you're getting the correct size in the neck. But you're just gonna pull that oof, down. You see in the back, it's all rolled up. We're just gonna pull that right, whoop, pull it down in the front as well. All right, so you put your hand in there, you lift your breast tissue up, and out and there you go is boom, boom. The only thing that you need to remember aside from making sure you have the correct size and making sure you have one that has some stretch and can breathe the other important thing is the amount of time that you leave these binders on you do not want to leave them on for more than eight hours don't leave them on for eight and a half take them off as soon as it hits that eight hour mark and the reason that we don't want to do that is because, again, it can mess with your ribs, it can <laughs> cause shortness of breath, um, things like that. I understand that not everybody is going to have access to things like this, especially when you're first starting out in your drag career. Um, first of all, there's a lack of just knowing where to look. Um, and secondly, whew, all this stuff gets really expensive. It does. Drag is a hobby that you just throw all your extra money to. It's true, that's what it ends up being. Um, but obviously we wouldn't do it if we didn't love it. But um, a lot of times people try to do things that are a little more cost effective. I've seen people straight up fully wrap themselves around and around and around in things like ace bandage or cloth. Don't do that because again, you are not giving yourself any <sighs> breathing space. You can break a rib, you can cause yourself breathing issues. If you don't treat your breast tissue as nicely as you can, you could jeopardize your chances of getting top surgery. And I don't want anybody to do that because dysphoria is very real. And I want you guys to be able to um, have the body that you want and you deserve when the time comes. So just make sure that you're treating what you do have nice. Um, so yeah, don't use an ace bandage. Use a binder only. Um, unless you wish to take. I remember when uh, my binder first came in the mail. Of course, I had to try it on right away because I was super excited. You know how it is. Um, and I got stuck. <laughs> I got stuck the first couple times I wore it. Um, my only brand recommendation, once again, is GC2B. You can find them online. But yeah, that's the only brand recommendation that I have because it's actually the only one that I've ever bought because I bought it based off of a drag recommendation of another king. I think it was Mick Douche from Chicago. I think he was the one who directed me to um, GC2B. Now, we're gonna talk about tape. First, I wanna talk about types of tape, what you should use, what you should avoid. You should never tape with anything that is not meant for your skin. Masking tape, don't do it. Duct tape, don't do it. Those adhesives are not made for your skin. They can cause a lot, a lot, a lot of irritation. The only thing that you should be using are things that are made for your skin. K2 tape, rock tape, or trans tape. I like trans tape and I'm gonna share why with you. First of all, it's made by trans people for trans people. Again, a lot of these kinds of purchases that I make, I like to purchase from LGBTQ individuals, um, especially LGBTQ entrepreneurs because that's amazing. Um, trans tape, when you open it up, I don't know if you can see that there, um, it has markers on it and those are just like centimeters. So this is really cool because first of all, there's no labels on this like there are on, K on KT tape and it is one continuous roll. So you don't have pre-cut strips that you have to deal with. You can cut this however you want and you can measure it by their centimeter ticks on the inside. Once you get to know your body well enough, 
you'll be able to know exactly what size of pieces that you need to cut off in order to make your chest the shape that you For me, I do best with, and this is, hold on, let me split these up. This is per side. I do best with one 10 centimeter piece like this and then two 12 centimeter pieces like this. Again, that's just my body. Um, you're, it's it's gonna be different for everybody. It's gonna be a matter of trial and error and figuring out what works for you. Do, 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 do. I was gonna say something else about this specifically. Oh yes, also this comes in, it has different color and size options. This is, I don't remember if this is the, yeah, this is the medium. Go to their website, transtape.co. They have um, like a of all different sizes and they have like three different colors. They have light tan, tan, and brown. Um, and they also have like pride editions that they come out with. So I'm gonna go on and tape for you guys. Um, first things first, you wanna make sure you start out with clean skin. If you don't have clean skin, then who cares about this? It's not gonna stick to you. It's just not. Um, so the best thing to do obviously is to make sure that your skin is, you know, clean with soap and water and to remove any excess oils go on and you know rub yourself down with um alcohol um if you have blisters from taping previously uh well you know don't do that just skip the alcohol part and hope that the soap and water works um blisters are something that happen with tape i'll talk about those later and the ways that we can try to prevent them because even though this is probably the safest taping technique to say that taping your chest is safe is a myth there is no truly 100 percent safe way to do this i am just showing you the best way that i know how and the way that's going to be the kindest on your skin and the way that's going to give you the best long lasting results so Again, make sure everything's clean, swab with alcohol, especially where your anchor points are gonna be, which are gonna be just on the inside of your nipples here. That's gonna be one anchor point. And the other anchor point is going to be about right here, okay? So you want to especially make sure to pay attention to those areas. Clean it all off, obviously, but those two areas specifically, just inside the nipples and under your armpits, just past where your armpits are, okay? Um, second thing you want to make sure to take care to do is protect your nipples. Now you can do that any number of ways. Um, Band-aids are a great way to do it. Um, if you get like those large, you know, the larger band-aids, you can put those right over there. Um, you can even use the backing of this. You can rip off a piece of the backing and apply it there. You can use paper towels. I'm actually gonna use toilet paper today. Um, I know it probably sounds weird, like, oh, toilet paper is just going to fall apart, but bitch, we working with Charmin, so it's going to be fine. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold this down to a size that's appropriate for my nip knot. And make sure your hands are nice and clean, too, when you're doing this, because the more you touch the tape and the oilier your hands are, the less adhesive it becomes. So... I'm going to start with one of these. This is one of my boop, 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 boop. This is one of my 10 centimeters possible. I was going to try to do it like up in the camera, but I'm having a hard time seeing. So we're just going to start to peel that back. If you're familiar with kinetic tape at all, KT tape, you know how it looks on the inside, on the adhesive part. It's exactly how this looks too. I don't know if you can see the waves, the lines in it. The reason that it is like that is because it is designed to move with your skin and that is one and they also use a medical grade adhesive which means you know it's the best for your skin so I'm gonna start with one of these little toilet paper squares that I made and I'm gonna slip it over my nipple Oh, my shirt holds it in place how nice now I've got this and I got this pulled back about two or three centimeters here that's all I need for now um, it's important to do this as little of the adhesive as a, at, uh, at a time as possible. So yeah, so I'm going to go on and get started here. Um, once I do this first one, I feel like it's going to be easier for me to show you the second one. So let me kind of just dig in here and get this first guy put on. So the second one, like I said, 
I'm gonna go on, place the toilet paper there, peel this back just a little bit, and we're gonna get it started. You know, I'm gonna get out of the frame for this guy too, and I'm just gonna get myself started here. And then I'll show you guys what I'm doing. All right, so I got this started. So you see, I only took this edge right here and applied it. That's all we need. What I'm doing now, my boob doesn't itch. I'm just creating friction so that way the tape stays better. I'm pretty sure it was Damien Deluxe's taping tutorial that taught me that. But left on the tape is when you started. So our starting anchor points and our ending anchor points are gonna be about the same. Now what I'm gonna do with this, I'm gonna hang on, so that way this doesn't separate from the tape. I'm gonna bend over a little bit, and I'm going to push my breast tissue back under my armpit. Now a lot of people think that this comes from a pulling motion with the tape. That's not what you wanna do. So what you wanna do instead is, I like to bend forward because I feel like, you know, gravity, and then I just take my hand and I push Back. And then you see right there, I'm going to plant that anchor and I'm going to whoop, unpeel and I'm going to scratch at that anchor as well. Oh, I think I got, oh yeah, we got armpit hair in there. <laughs> it's going to be great. So we're just going to scratch, scratch, scratch that up. The reason that I cut these a little bit longer is because they're going to be covering a longer stretch of skin. This tape doesn't stick to itself very well. It sticks to your skin. So you're going to want to make sure that your starting anchor and your ending anchor are on your skin and not on the tape. So again, I'm just peeling this back. This is so impossible to see in this. Sorry, I gotta kinda do this because I gotta get to the side of your guys' comments and stuff. I really don't know where. Mom says that's gonna leave a mark. Well, you know what? It might, but it might not as long as we are being really careful. So, in here, I'm gonna scratch that guy down. So here, to push my breast tissue. Pushing, and then we're gonna anchor, oof, on the outside of that tape there. And you can see, I made a boo-boo, and this is probably gonna give me a boo-boo. Um, whenever you are placing your anchors, you don't want any creases in your tape. You want it to be as straight as possible. I usually do this in a mirror, not in a phone. Um, so I'm gonna make some errors. So yeah, so that guy's getting there. We're gonna do another little bottom guy over here. I can unpeel it. Maybe I shouldn't have cut my nails before I started this. There we go. Again, being really, really careful to not touch a lot of the adhesive. I'm just gonna place it right there and scratchy the hecky out of it. Again, we do that to get some friction going in there. It just sticks better, it just does. And I'm gonna peel this guy back, leaving my anchor there, like I said, about three centimeters. Bend over a little bit. As you can see, gravity's doing its job. We're just gonna whoop, push that guy up there. We're not relying on the tape to do the pushing and pulling. I'm relying on my opposite hand. And hopefully this one, yeah, it's much straighter. Woohoo! There we go, looking good. When I put my arms down though, you can still see a little boobage there. And a little take. I'm gonna take a drink first. And then I'm gonna take my last two. 12 centimeter pieces. Smooth 
this armpit fat boob nonsense down. Again, if you guys are just now joining me, I just hid the comments. So if you are asking me any questions, I can't answer them just yet. Once I get all taped up though, I will flip back over toward the comments and I will answer any burning questions you may have. And again, we're putting this on the skin, putting the anchor part on the skin and not on the tape because it won't stick to the tape. It's only gonna stick to your skin. Scratching that for friction and then we'll peel back. And with this guy, I'm gonna pull him down ever so slightly for two reasons. One, I don't wanna catch any more armpit hair and two, with this guy down here, I pulled up. With this guy up top, I pulled down just a little bit. Um, and then if it leaves me some, but I don't think I cut this quite long enough. Let's see, did that do it? Hey! Cool. I'm gonna kind of look off to the side. I like to look at the profile of them especially because sometimes when I do this I get this little thing in the middle that like like it all it's like it pinches and it makes it look like I've got this little tiny boob and I don't I don't want that um so I don't hate that I've definitely done better I've done better to where like this is more but what are we gonna do well, here we go Pull this back, leave a little bit here. We're just gonna smoosh with the hand. Oop. Smoosh with the hand. And, ow. Scratch it to bits. Cool. Let me look at the profile here. Okay, so you can kind of see I don't know if you can tell. I've got this little, do you guys see what I'm talking about? Like the tape is really harsh right here and then there's a little whoop, right there. I don't like that. It looks weird. So I'm gonna get rid of it. So I'm actually probably gonna just do the same thing on both sides, just so it can be as even as possible. All right, so I've got these two that I got. I decided to make them 14 centimeters long. Um, so I'm just gonna apply this piece of tape here just to the inside of where all the other tape was. So this is my last one that I'm going to place. It's just going to kind of smooth out this little, these little bleep bloops that happened here. So we're just going to, this piece I am going to stretch. I am going to stretch with the tape, but I'm not going to stretch my anchor points. I'll stretch the tape and then I'll push it back here. The reason I say don't stretch your anchor points is because again, that's how blistering can happen. That's why it's really important to just peel back that little tiny bit. Another piece. Here it is. That's why it's important to just peel back that little tiny bit and then apply it and then stretch the tape. And then again, when you're anchoring it down, um, that's why I leave it. I don't know if that makes sense. So that's why I like, I pull it back like this because this piece here is not going to get stretched. It is just going to get applied, right there, okay? Then we go on and we leave everything but this piece. I'm gonna hold on to this piece because this piece can't get stretched. I can go on and stretch this guy because again, we're not doing a lot of pulling with this piece. We're just doing some shaping. So. There we go, I'm all taped up. I'm gonna go on and kind of hide these comments again just so I can take a look. I'm pretty happy with how that looks. If you, I still have like some shape to my chest a little bit, but um, it's pretty masculinized. Um, so yeah, like I said, when you are applying, make sure your skin is clean. Make sure you do not stretch the pieces that take that adhere to your skin. That's what's gonna give you blisters. And you can see it in the blisters. Like if you have, like say that this is a fold in your tape, like your tape just whoop, kind of folded together, your blister is gonna form right in here where that fold is um, because your skin just isn't, you know, our skin is sensitive. It is. Um, 
Now, when I go to take this off later, I'm not gonna take it off now, that would be a waste. I'm probably actually gonna leave this on for a day or so. Um, when you're using like KT tape and rock tape to um, bind yourself, I would recommend taking it, taking your tape off after you're done performing. Um, because otherwise you can blister, uh, get some skin irritation, things like that. Trans tape is actually rated for up to, I, I don't, I don't want to overshoot it. I think it's 72 hours. I've never gone longer than 48 hours. Um, I've only ever like worn it overnight and then the next day it comes off. Um, because I feel like the longer you wear it, the more blistering can happen. Um, so I try not to prolong my use too much, but I mean, I will sleep in this tonight. Um, but give me a second. I need to take a drinky. So when we're removing this, what you're going to want to do, um, the easiest way to do this, I think as much as you can. You can even use oil if you want to. Olive oil works just fine. Um, balms work. What I like to use doo -doo -doo, is bag balm. It's got a little picture of a cow on it. It's because this stuff is literally made for cow udders. <laughs> like when their udders get chapped from being milked too much, that's what this is for. Um, so when my udders get too chapped, <laughs> I'll just pull it right out. But honestly, it works really well um, soak through the material and get the adhesive oily so it comes off easier. You do not want to take this off dry because it will hurt you. Um, what you want to do, like I said, you can get in the shower, get everything wet, get it soapy if you want to, get some oil on there, um, and then you're going to want to take it off in the same direction you put it on. So we put the tape on from the inside to the outside. You make it off starting here and you you'll start to like scratch it scratch the ends up a little bit and you'll start to pull it off now when that tape stops giving you as much grace like when it stops moving as well when it's not coming off easy don't force it stop what you're doing apply more water apply more soap apply more balm get that adhesive working and then once it starts moving easily go on and do it again um, again, if you just whoosh, rip it off, you're going to be in blister city. I'm sure that you can see, I don't know if you can see any of mine. Yep. I've got some scarring from, you can probably see some of it from times that I have been impatient and either improperly taped or ripped my tape off. Um, so again, this is not perfect. There is no such thing as 100% safe taping, but this is the safest way that I know. Um, you'll also notice that no part of me is wrapped all the way around. I can still breathe really, really well. That's another reason I like this better binder, because the only thing that's restricted is just my skin and my fat, and only in this area. My back is totally open, my chest is totally open, I can breathe, there's not going to be any cracking of ribs, anything like that to worry about. Everything is tucked away and taped safely, as safely as it can be with tape. If you do end up blistering when you take your tape off, take this stuff, put it on it instantly immediately don't wait get this shit on there um it's gonna hurt it's gonna hurt when you rub it on and i'm really sorry um but get this on there immediately sleep with a loose shirt on and the next morning i can guarantee you uh those blisters are gonna be like from here to here and they're gonna hurt a lot less so again just to kind of recap everything um we're not looking for flat because flat doesn't exist. Nobody has a truly flat chest. Um, we are just looking for a restructuring. Binders. Uh, GC2B.com. Do not get a binder that has no give in it. It should be unforgiving in the front and very forgiving in the back. Do not get a binder that's too small for you. Do not use ace wrap. Don't use anything that's going to go all the way around you and that's going to crack your ribs or restrict you from breathing. Um, do not wear this for more than eight hours. Don't do it. Don't fuck up your lungs. Don't fuck up your ribs. Your health, and that's way more important than getting up on stage. I promise you. 
your ribs and your breasts are going to last you your whole lifetime. This is something that is wonderful and it's a great art form, but it's temporary. So just be careful. Tape, don't use duct tape, don't use masking tape, do not use anything that is not made for your skin. Use trans tape or KT tape or rock tape. Never, ever, ever stretch the pieces that are adhering to your skin. Leave those nice and straight. And when we're pulling, we're not using the tape to pull, we're using our hand to push. The tape is just there to adhere. It is not there to yank your breasts around. It is there to just assist you. Use your hand to put your breast where you want it. Um, and again, be careful when you take this off. This is no joke. This stuff especially, I will say out of everything that I've tried, I've tried KT tape, I've tried rock tape, and I've done this. This adhesive is the one that is no joke. It is wonderful um, because it is... Um, you can swim in it, you can shower in it, um, you can work out in it, it's safe for all of that, but don't wear it for more than a couple of days. And the longer you blister, and if you do blister, get some kind of ointment on there right away. Take care of yourself, take care of your skin.